A new siege machine that fancies defenses, not the town hall. Better look out from above, this thing is powerful. But hey, what's up guys, Bisectatron here. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. This is sneak peek number three, the Stone Slammer, a new siege machine coming to Clash of Clans. And you guys can probably already see from the first like 30 seconds of this video, this thing is really powerful and it's very different from the other two siege machines. So we're gonna look at actual gameplay, we're gonna go through the mechanics of it, give you guys everything you need to know in this video. First, you have to know how wide the range of the splash damage is. It takes out the cannon at Town Hall 10 in one shot. This is a max level three stone slammer, but you'll see it also damages the nearby storages. This next one will give you guys an even better idea. Um, it does extra damage to walls, so it is like the wall wrecker in that sense, and you can see that, that damage is insane. It has a humongous radius, so it opens up walls as well as taking out defenses, because look at that. I mean, those are three walls um, kind of radiating outward from that expo. It takes out um, at Town Hall 10, and pretty much any Town Hall level, it's two drops with that max stone slammer to take out the walls. So if you just drop a cannon, you won't take out the walls next to it necessarily, because the walls take two drops. The air defenses, all four of them are gonna do a pretty good job this is higher in hit points than the Battle Blimp, so it is significantly higher at that. So with that in mind, um, it's a little slower, it bounces to defenses. The Battle Blimp is better at penetrating into the base, dropping in a very specific location. This thing is better at opening up a path for a kill squad perhaps, and it's a little more tankier but it moves slower just because of, well I guess the move speed first of all, but also more importantly it bounces between defenses, it doesn't target the Town Hall. So you can see here, the Archer Towers at Town Hall 10 don't do a ton of damage. We have all uh, seven Archer Towers, and it can take out most of them, and the balloons inside will take out the rest. But you can bring balloons in it, you can bring bowlers in it. Um, I think the best thing to bring is probably um, some type of air troop, because unlike the Wall Wrecker or the Battle Blimp, you're not really pushing that far into the base typically, so you don't want to necessarily bring bowlers or something that you want to actually drop right in the middle of the base. Now you can see here, it can soak up three maxed Seeking Air Mines at Town Hall 10. That just shows how many hit points it really has. All right, let's take a look at it on a more uh, base looking thing. This is a segment of a base you might see that doesn't have that much air coverage. And maybe this poor defender is trying to use that Multi-Inferno to counter the new Bat spell. Well, they're kind of out of luck because the tanky Stone Slammer gets all the way in there and takes out that Inferno uh, unsupported even with the air defense and a few other air targeting defenses in the area, plus the balloons finish it off. Now there might be other defenses around the outside if this was a full base to take out those balloons quicker, but the point is there, and you can see it also opened up a path for a potential kill squad, which makes it really interesting because it takes out a bunch of walls, and we'll see that later in an actual war attack. It takes out a bunch of walls, um, opening up a path for a kill squad, which is weird because it itself is an air troop. All right, let's take a look at it on, against the Giga Tesla at Town Hall 12. You can see it has absolutely no problem. Now, of course, you have to drop the Earthquake spell so it recognizes the Giga Tesla as a defense. Um, that is something you have to do for any defensive targeting troop or spell. Um, now, the Air Sweeper actually doesn't do a whole lot of work against it. You can see it actually beats that second blow. This thing isn't terribly slow. Um, I think it's the same movement speed as a healer, from what I've heard. So it's not like, you know, golem speed. It actually is moving at a decent speed, and it can go between defenses relatively quickly. Um, it uh, drops those stones, mm, I think, about as quickly as a balloon, I might say. But I don't have the actual numbers for that at the moment. Now, of course, it gets affected by the tornado trap, which is actually a good way to stop it, because it can hold it up there. Now, unfortunately, the Giga Tesla was not activated in this little clip, but had it been, it would have gotten some more damage off, although I don't think it would have been enough to take out the Stone Slammer, because it just has so many more hit points uh, than the Giga Tesla can deal in damage. So moving on to this next one, we're going to show kind of relative damage. This is a max Town Hall 12 defenses. It can one-shot a cannon, which itself has a fair amount of hit points. Once you get up to the Wizard Tower, though, 
takes two shots, same going up for the Expo, which is even a little bit higher in hit points, and also two shots for the Inferno Tower. Now, if this is down at Town Hall 10, I think the Wizard Tower will be able to be one-shotted, but once you get up back to like the Expo area, it starts to be too much. And that's huge. If this can one-shot like defenses like cannons, archer towers, mortars, those like low to medium hit point defenses, that has some serious implications because it can move through a base quickly. So let's take a look at it against the single Inferno. Once again, it has to two-shot these Infernos to take them out at any Town Hall level 10 through 12. And you can see here, the Inferno, the single Inferno actually is able to get it down and take it out. So with the Bat spell, it's going to be interesting because you want to have those multis to defend the Bat. But um, it, the single Inferno is also one of the best counters, I think, to this new Siege Machine, the Stone Slammer. We're going to go ahead and pair it up with the Bat spells for a few replays. And there's kind of mixed success. I think what this shows is that having those wizard towers out of uh, range of the air defenses is important. Having them kind of spread out throughout your base and in vulnerable locations is best because if you have areas that don't have splash, such as multi-infernos or wizard towers, you're gonna get wrecked by the bat spell. We saw that in the last video, uh, if you haven't checked that out already. But at the same time, the single infernos are nice to take out the stone slammer. And right here, it actually does take a fair bit of damage, but it is able to get that inferno down with the help of the bats. Now guys, keep in mind, once again, this is the level three maxed out stone slammer. The reason I'm showing it is that most clans have the clan perk where they can donate a plus two levels on whatever is being donated. So most people will have the maxed one in their clan castle rather than a level one or level two, which will have slightly lower stats, of course. Okay, let's take a look at some actual replays of this thing in action here from a little test war. And you can see that it's being used here with a Lalo, which is typically when you'll use it. And this was a great use for it because it's being used with the kill squad here, uh, the attacker wants to enter at a location that doesn't have a ton of air coverage. Now, there is the single Inferno, and I guess the air defense is a little bit deeper into the base. But with the Freeze, the uh, Stone Slammer gets a little bit of help there, then uses a Bat spell to kind of help get a little extra damage on that Inferno. That's the difference between one-shotting it and two-shotting it, especially at Town Hall 10, when the Infernos are weaker. And the path it made with those walls is basically like an Earthquake spell, letting the King and those Valks in. Now, the, the, they kind of do walk a little bit because there wasn't anything for them to target inside the base. But you can see how great the, the uh, funnel was and the, the opening in that base is for a Kill Squad to follow in from behind. So that's very interesting in terms of uh, making a kill squad based Lalo and using the stone slammer with your kill squad. And then for the rest of this, just going to go ahead and Laloon the base. Uh, there is a Tesla farm here, but has a heal spell for it. And even though a bunch of lava pups popped, uh, the pretty good value, not a huge investment with the kill squad and got pretty good value from it, which uh, allowed this Lalo to work very nicely. So this is a good example at Town Hall 10, how it might be used to let a kill squad into the base. So cleanup will begin right here, we'll fast forward a little bit, and then take a look at one more attack, also Town Hall 10, using the Stone Slammer. And later on, uh, I'll probably be posting more videos of it, gameplay at Town Hall 11, Town Hall 12, for you guys who are curious. But it'll be used pretty similarly, um, although at Town Hall 12, there might be some ways to take out the Giga Tesla on the Town Hall uh, using the Stone Slammer. Okay, so I also want to show some of the limitations of it, and this next attack is a good example. Kind of a weird base, um, not the best design, but that aside, it doesn't work very well just as a component of a La Luna attack, like you'd use the Battle Blimp. Um, because the Battle Blimp is more like a Lava Hound. It goes deep into the base, you can deploy balloons exactly where you want them, or an Electro Dragon. Uh, pick your your poison there but the stone slammer it doesn't go into the base very far and you can see here it takes hits from a seeking air mine and the queen and although it does take out defenses that value is not as useful because balloons can do that as well and there's already tanking going on inside the base so in this situation it really didn't get much value besides uh taking out like a adding some damage there and then bringing the balloons a little farther into the base so you're not going to want to use it instead of a battle blimp the battle blimp is better for a La Luna attack if you're just lolloing the back end of a base, I think. The Stone Slammer is better for kill squads and in small situations where you can really take advantage of a certain part of a base where there's not a whole lot of air defense coverage. You can get in there, get out, get like a multi-inferno, a few other defenses that don't quite have that DPS needed to take it out. So I think it's going to be a very situational uh, type siege machine. You're going to want to you know, use it based on 
what Bates calls for and it can be very creatively used. So I'm looking forward to seeing how people choose to use it going forward. But that will do it for this video. Two more things I have to add about the update. First, for those of you who attack on tablet, you will now have the option to instead of have a scroll bar, you can have two rows of troops to deploy, which is kind of nice. And secondly, even when you've already began attacking, you can still switch your siege machine out for the regular clan castle, and you can also still switch the Grand Warden uh, modes. So that will do it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bisectatron out.